Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into my latest video. The patient in this procedure attended with a fully blocked left ear with occluding earwax. And just a bit of a background on the patient. They had been seen by, I think, a couple of other specialists um, more local to them who were unable to remove this plug of wax. Um, the patient did return twice to one audiologist on one occasion who um, advised them to install drops. You can see the area is quite wet, the wax is, well, this lateral layer of wax anyway is quite wet and soft. Um, but despite that, they weren't able to remove this plug. And in some ways, yes, um, it was a very tricky procedure and you'll see that during the next eight minutes or so. Um, the patient didn't do any favours themselves because they had used a, a cotton bud which further impacted this wax very needily deep in the ear. Now, the drops they used, what they did, it was, sorry, this part here, the patient was just talking, I remember, so when patients talk, their jaw moves, so I was just waiting for the patient to stop and then I proceeded to enter the ear with the instrument because I didn't want to make contact with the canal wall whilst I was talking because that can be very uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, when you've got a plug of wax this, this dense, now I called it a hardcore ear wax removal because it's, you can't visualise it, but when I'm actually on this plug of wax with the suction probe, the Zolma suction probe, I could just feel like how hard the core was, how dense this plug of wax was. And when you've got a, a plug of wax and keratin this dense and the core being as hard as it was in this case, Drops are really not going to, I don't think, do much. You, you could, they may penetrate the outer surface of the wax, the lateral surface, and that might become a bit softer, which you, which it, it did happen when the patient attended, the outer layer was a bit softer. Um, now what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to actually get an ear hook into the core of the wax, but it was so rock solid in the, in the core that this ear, ear hook couldn't penetrate. Um, it almost glanced off. The, the, the surface of the wax and so I've just gone back again with uh, micro section and what I'm trying to do really is just elevate this uh, the skin that's coating this plug of wax off the canal wall um, inferiorly where we are now so we're probably mid canal and this is the base of the ear canal um, you can see the drops have softened the wax here but it's not done much else um, and I'm now just on the posterior canal wall and you'll see me doing this uh, for the next few minutes, if I'm honest. I'm just trying to loosen this plug. Um, uh, I, I can't use forceps. There's nothing for me to grip onto. Um, now, if the patient was asleep or had local anesthesia, neither of which what, what I do, uh, we'd just be a bit more aggressive and get an ear hook right behind it. Uh, even if it causes a bit of trauma to the patient, so they're, they're going to be uh, numb to the pain or asleep. But all my patients are awake. Uh, we don't use anaesthesia. So in the UK, an audiologist, um, we're not able to prescribe or administer any local anaesthesia like lidocaine. It's a bit frustrating actually because, um, and I think something needs to change. Uh, I'll explain that in a moment. So I've just come back in with the ear hook again and I've just managed to chisel in. So sometimes with an ear hook, the aim of the ear hook is to kind of slice and dice this um, hard piece of wax into pieces and re-enter with a suction probe. Um, so when I run my clear wax training courses, quite often we have paramedics who attend um, and prescribing nurses and prescribing pharmacists. And you train them and you kind of, you, you just, trying to be polite, but some, sometimes you just, not, this is just a minority, but you just think, well, it's a bit worrying that this individual is able to prescribe stuff for the ear, but someone like myself is not. Um, so it is frustrating. Um, but that's just the way things are in the UK, um, unfortunately. Uh, it would be great if audiologists like myself are able to prescribe and administer medication for out of ear um, abnormalities and pathologies, and also if we were able to uh, administer some lidocaine. So lidocaine is a local anaesthesia. I think it also comes in a drop solution, so there's no injections needed. Uh, anyway, but that's for another day. 
so what I've done now, just, just, I, I've, I've kind of just um, uh, informed the patient as well, preempt the patient, and kind of conceded that I'm just going to have to get this out of the nail hook. Uh, I'm not going to put any drops in because the patients use uh, a massive amount of drops. And as I said, with this, when the core is this hard, the drops is not really going to do much. It may soften the edge, it may lubricate it to facilitate me extracting it forwards a bit, but it's just large, it's too deep. Um, so in a moment, uh, I am going to just use an ear hook and I'm just going to go uh, into the ear with a bit more force. Uh, but again, without making contact with the ear canal wall, still, although I'm being forceful, I realise I need to, um, whenever I perform ear waxing, if you see my issues, I'm trying to be gentle and it's someone's ear and um, I, I've had trauma in my ear when I was younger, so I know what it can feel like. I know how sensitive the ear is myself through my own experience. Um, so not only as an audiologist, but also I've got first-hand experience. So the first priority is when you remove earwax is to make sure that your patient's as comfortable as possible. And when you realise that you need to step it up a level, you just preempt the patient. And again, you still be gentle. There's no excuse not to be gentle. And what I've did here, I inserted the ear hook inferiorly. Uh, I'm trying to get to the core of the wax and I'm rotating it and just trying to stab it in the middle. But again, it's just too hard and it's just... It's just glanced off the tip. So just going back in with the uh, micro suction tip, just um, suctioning some of the remnants that occurred after that last visit with an ear hook. I think I'm just going to go to the roof here, just trying to bring this down a bit. So about um, half a centimetre, centimetre away from the eardrum, we have a narrowing of the ear canal called the ethmus, and then the ear canal protrudes outwards again. And this plug of wax is lodged beyond the ethmus. So there is a piece of segment of wax that is larger than the isthmus, which is more medium towards the eardrum. And the key is, how do we get that out? Because uh, we're having to bring that forwards through the, the narrowing of the ear. So it's a bit of a game of physics as well. Um, throughout the patient, it's completely comfortable. Uh, sometimes patients find procedures quite therapeutic. Um, I wouldn't say this patient did, but at the same time, it wasn't uncomfortable. And what I've done here, I've just gone to the roof and I'm just bringing this forward. You can see I've managed to literally drag um, this plug of wax and keratin laterally. Um, we're now at the entrance. And it's a fair size now. I didn't measure it. Now, I know sometimes um, I hate some comments that you didn't measure it. Um, or take a still image. It's just sometimes we're so busy in clinic, we just don't get time, and it's just patient after the other. So I do apologise that I didn't take a still image of that one. So as you said, patients have been using loads of drops for about a week or two. So the ear canal's quite wet. Um, so I've just gone back in with some micro suction and just mopping up the ear just a little bit. All this is fine. It's dry up naturally now, and it will migrate. Um, and there's the final view of the eardrum. We see that in a moment. Actually, we're just going to mop up a bit more at the entrance. Um, some people say, uh, uh, "Why you, you why don't you use dry mopping?" So dry mopping is a technique where you get some cotton wool, you, you insert it on the reverse end of a job some horn, which is serrated, and you place a cotton wool in the end, spin it. But that can just graze the ear canal. We don't want to do that, and it's this is all fine. It's going to dry the tympanic membrane's healthy. You can just about see the light reflex there. Yes, the the handle of the malice is slightly inflamed because the wax plug was um, up against it, but that will settle down. Patient can hear very well indeed, another happy client. Um, yeah, uh, sorry I've not uploaded much of late. Uh, I have been uploading really short videos on my Facebook and Instagram page, so if you search the Hair Clinic on Instagram or Facebook, you can follow me there. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, we've had some internet problems and I've had to change a supplier and we've just had our new supplier installed broadband today, so I'm up and running again and I can start uploading some more videos because it won't take as long as it was in the last week or so. Have a great evening guys, take care and speak soon.